Aunque es cierto que blockchain abre muchas puertas y nos da alternativas para crear una nueva forma de desarrollar sistemas, puede ser complicado entender cómo utilizar y operar estos nuevos instrumentos. Hoy nos acompaña Maxime Beauchamp, fundador de Cloudmos, una herramienta enfocada en ayudarnos a tener un mejor entendimiento de cómo funciona a Cash Network y maximizar el potencial de este protocolo. Hello, everyone in the crypto space. Welcome to another episode of Cryptomonedas.deo. Thank you so much for making us part of your weekly routine. And thank you for making us part of your Mondays so that you start the day with information that's relevant about the blockchain space directly from people that are using all of their wits and energy to cause an impact in this, in this industry. So today we have an amazing interview with max from cloudmos uh, he's the actual founder of cloudmos so for you of uh, those who don't know what cloudmos cloudmos is it's a set of tools aiming to disrupt the cloud industry by providing easy access to the akash network a decentralized cloud computing marketplace giving people alternatives in a highly centralized environment and this is actually something we've talked about in the past in the show Uh, but Max obviously is going to go more in depth about the benefits of decentralizing the cloud industry. So I just wanted to uh, welcome you to the show, Max. Thank you so much for coming and from spending a little bit of time here. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to spend some time with you and introduce to you what we do at Cloudmos. Absolutely, and I think everyone is going to be really excited because uh, Akash is a project that we talk about a lot and. Most people don't understand like the current status of how the cloud computing marketplace really functions. And uh, there's pretty much just a couple of big players in the space. Before we get into all that, can you please share the story behind Cloudmos? Like started, uh, we talked a little bit about that before we started the interview, but how did you get started in this journey? And like, how did you get involved with the Cosmos ecosystem and how do you get involved with blockchain? Sure, yeah, well, uh, it was uh, two years ago when uh, we were in the middle of the big bull run yeah. that everyone uh, started. A lot of people started uh, searching crypto projects and stuff at that time, uh, which is something I was doing as well. And I stumbled upon the, the Cosmos ecosystem in general. And what I was looking for specifically was just like a crypto project that was actually doing something real and not just like uh, some uh, Ponzi scheme or just a uh, vaporware. Yeah. I was looking for something of actual use and I came, ac I came across uh, the Akash network, which uh, to me made a lot of sense as a software engineer myself. I always use uh, cloud uh, providers like Google or Amazon or Azure, depending on the circumstances and um, when I found about a cache it was before they launched uh, their first mainnet and uh, I saw it as a good opportunity <laughs> you <see my> time. <laughs> <laughs> it happens no worries mine does the same thing <laughs> um, so yeah I saw it as a good opportunity to uh, get involved and just build something that people needed well Uh, before the mainnet, there was no uh, a cash network. Like, uh, well, it was there, but it wasn't usable by anyone. Yep. And when they first launched it, uh, it was uh, only through the console that you could deploy on the Akash network. And uh, my experience was uh, very well. Everyone was like, "It's so hard to deploy. Can we have like a, a tool? That would be amazing there if there was a tool to actually do it with a few clicks." Absolutely. And this is where uh, this is where I saw the opportunity to do this. And at the same time, uh, people are asking how many uh, deployments are there on the network? Like who's using a cache? And this is where we uh, started. Uh, back then, it was called a cache analytics, and this is was uh, uh, this was the 
our first project, sorry, to um, that we built on Akash, which was just a, a dashboard that displayed stats on the on the Akash network, like the usage, the amount of uh, deployments, uh, leases, and resources leased. And from there, we did that. People were uh, were happy to uh, finally have a dashboard to share and like learn about the Akash network. And then after that, our next project was uh, starting the uh, Cloudmost deploy, which is uh, what we have today. And uh, um, there was a, a lot of stuff that we worked on in the past two years, but um, we changed branding from Akash Lakes to Cloudmost a year ago and uh, continued to uh, improve our tools. And just recently, we uh, released Cloudmost Deploy. Previously, it was a desktop. Well, it's still available as a desktop app, but uh, it's much more accessible through the browser. And uh, yeah, we built a, a bunch of other tools that people use today. But uh, I guess that's like a good overview of the history of Cloudmost. That is awesome. With some gaps. With some gaps, yeah, absolutely. No, that's it's great. Like I told you, like we've here in the community, we've been looking at a cache for a long time. I remember, like before they launched the mainnet and everything, how excited everyone was for finally having something that was a decentralized, you know, alternative. And I would, I would also like to ask you, like as a side note, like why, what was it about the Cosmos ecosystem that? interested you so much and what was it about a cash specifically that you said like i think that i can like bring something to the table in this specific ecosystem and in this specific project um back then the main narratives were a lot around like ethereum yeah. and like which which l1 was going to rule the world yeah. and like <laughs> how to scale everything and stuff and just uh, the fact that uh, in Cosmos, each project have their own app chains made a lot of sense to me. And uh, that was also before the launch of uh, IBC. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, uh, it was announced back then. So I was reading all about it. And I, I thought to me that it has, that seems like the good solution to scalability and like the problems that the uh, Ethereum uh, proof of work was having back then. And even uh, uh, Vitalik himself, uh, I don't know if you saw, but in one of his uh, articles, he mentioned that uh, a lot of, well, some of the design pattern that, he, that, he, that he's using to scale Ethereum is uh, a bit inspired from the Cosmos ecosystem. So that was a, uh, I guess why I I was uh, drawn to the Cosmos ecosystem, and then yeah, Akash uh, was mostly uh, because I I just want to work on something that is that people can actually use in their in their real exactly. life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's really valuable because it's and we've been going over this in a bunch of episodes. It's just like the real use cases for blockchain technology, right? Like there's. Um, yeah, there has to be like a lot of focus on making these like products or projects palatable for people so that they actually use something like a decentralized alternative rather than just going, like you said, like through Amazon or through Google. So I would also ask you, would like to ask you if you can explain the concept of a cash network and how it differs from traditional cloud hosting solutions. Like why uh, should people contemplate like using a cache rather than going for like a more conventional cloud computing solution? Sure. Um, there's a uh, lots of different reasons, but uh, just to give uh, an example or, or like an explanation of what a cache is, um, they explain it uh, in some way well, as kind of a, like a, the Airbnb of cloud. Mm -hmm. So a cache is uh, just an simply put an aggregator of cloud providers uh, theory, theoretically, you could have in there Amazon as one of the providers in the cash network, but mostly right now it's just uh, individual uh, data centers that are offering their their cloud compute on the network as a provider. Um, so 
uh, when you deploy on a cache, you can just specify on which provider you want to deploy. And if that provider doesn't fit your needs, you can easily change to another provider. Uh, right, now, right now it's a manual, but we plan on uh, implementing in the future automatic uh, redeployment uh, for if your deployment runs out of funds or for some reason the provider shuts down, uh, which gives a much better like uh, uptime than if you're if you're, all of your services are hosted on one cloud provider. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, downtimes in the past two years from huge, well, from the big services like uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, whatever. Uh, sometimes they just go down because all of their infrastructure are, are is hosted mostly on one of the few uh, big cloud providers. So I guess that's one of the uh, incentive of going on a cache is uh, having the possibility to uh, host your your infrastructure in a more decentralized way. Um, there's other properties like uh, the fact that uh, there's no like a uh, way um, some someone could shut down your infrastructure um, censorship. Uh, well, they yeah, it's censorship resistant in that way. Uh, like there's some good and bad things about this. Uh, most of the people come up with the bad, bad things first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they always say, hey, what happens if they hold something bad for blah, blah, blah. And, uh, there's ways to fix that. But uh, the good ways about the censorship uh, resistance, uh, we've seen it in the past also. Um, some cloud providers don't allow crypto projects to run on their cloud providers yeah. anymore. So uh, that's something that a cash solves in that sense. Um, the only person that can shut down your 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 infrastructure is the provider itself. But uh, since it's not like big entities, they don't have like a a reason to shut down your infrastructure. Uh, whatever the reason, uh, the big cloud provider choose to shut down crypto. So um, so yeah, permissionless censorship resistant. Um, yeah, these are the biggest qualities I can come up with right now. Absolutely. That makes sense. It, yeah, it absolutely makes a lot of sense. And the fact that a lot of people don't even understand, you know, how cloud storaging systems and just what you mentioned that a lot of these services have denied, uh, building blockchain projects on, on top of them really tells you the need that we have for something like the Akash network and something like Cloudmos, you know, to like navigate this blockchain more easily and i remember the point you mentioned about the big services coming like going down and i remember being with a big group of friends that none of them you know understand anything that's blockchain regarded like regarding blockchain and they were like well how could that happen that a, a cloud you know service just goes down and all these platforms going down so easy and i was like well let me tell you and you know i went like all well, crypto evangelist and i was like because of this and then this and this and then i remember telling them about a cash network so it's something that's definitely necessary for the people that are building you know blockchain projects and it's something that people that even are not engaging with blockchain consistently they'll read the benefits of having a decentralized cloud hosting service. So I think that's really valuable. And you were talking about deployment a little bit. So I would also like you to explain to people like how does the deploy, uh, deployment process work on a cache? Like what are their requirements to deploy an application or, or website? And like, if you can also point out like maybe like differences from a traditional like uh, service or something like that. Sure, yeah. Um... So how the Akash uh, network works in terms of deployment is uh, mostly around the, well, mostly. It's around yeah. Docker containers. Um, so uh, if you're a developer, you probably know what's a Docker container. If you're not, you have no idea and you're just like, what's a container? Um, basically, it's just a way to uh, package your application into, they call it a container. Uh, Lots of, well, you can host containers on all of the big cloud providers. 
and there's other ways to deploy your application, but uh, Docker containers was introduced uh, as a newer technology in the past uh, 10 years, I believe, something like that. And so, yeah, the design choice that they decided to go with was uh, with Docker containers, which I think it makes sense because um, you can package your, it, it doesn't matter which language, uh, programming language you decided to go with to, de to develop your application, you can always uh, containerize it uh, with Docker. So it's a super flexible and it's uh, easy to scale. And uh, so, yeah, you need to have a Docker container. There's also uh, uh, already made solutions uh, out there that uh, you can deploy without having to make your own Docker container. For example, uh, there's a, a ton of uh, pre-made solutions like uh, a WordPress website, for example. Uh, there's a Docker container that already has that solution so you can just deploy it and reap the benefits of running that uh, WordPress website. Um, so yeah, you need that and then you need uh, a few AKTs to, uh, cause yeah, the Akash network is a, all of the transaction and, uh, operation to create a deployment, uh, create a lease and, uh, talk with the providers. You need to have some AKT and, uh, after that you can go uh, on the uh, deploy.cloudmost.io and follow the instructions to deploy something. So yeah, it's, it's never been easier than today because we, uh, yeah, we launched, uh, we launched it on Friday. So it's the first time that you can actually deploy something in the browser. Wow. So you don't need to download anything. Just need to uh, connect your Kepler wallet. I believe uh, your community is aware of Kepler, so Absolutely, I, don't know if yeah. I need to explain uh, <laughs> how to get AKTs and swap and osmosis and stuff. Yeah, they have a they have a hang of it. Uh, well, congratulations about that, like first and foremost, because I know like the hours that go into developing something, it's it really takes it's incredible. Uh, I'm not a, a developer myself; like I'm involved with a movement of developers, and it is just incredible. Like just the yeah precision and uh, just like lateral thinking that you have to develop just to make sure like when you're looking at something and it's like okay like this line is not really gonna like like I said I'm not a developer myself but I I'm thoroughly interested in the process of deploying something and I remember that actually within our community we did a little tutorial or like a little class of how to how would you go about using something on the Akash network and it's amazing how people become interested like both people that are already developers and also people that have never considered, you know, development as a career path or anything. And they become so uh, enthralled or interested with what's going on that they end up, you know, joining as developers for all these amazing blockchain projects, because there's really a lot of projects out there that are always looking for people that are, you know, interested in, you know, like bringing something new to the table and bringing their skill sets from a more traditional world into the blockchain world. So that is, that is amazing. And Max, I would like to ask you then, what kind of applications and projects can be deployed on, on the Akash network? Any project, basically, uh, just need to uh, Docker containerize it. Um, right now, it's not the best for all kinds of projects, but uh, it'll get there at some point. It's a very uh, bleeding edge technology. so. You can't expect uh, it to run like flawlessly for everything, but uh, uh, right now, um, yeah, you can you can deploy anything that can be containerized, which is basically anything. It's a bit of a broad answer, but uh... that's no, that's perfect. <laughs> that's great. That's perfect. That it's good that people know that they can pretty much deploy anything, and that it takes time. You know, like good development takes time. Uh, sometimes like, like yeah. we were talking, like things move so fast in this space that we, you know, like look at a little update on, on Twitter and we go like, oh yeah, it's just another update, but we don't really value like the, you know, the steps that all these projects are taking every single day. And like you said, you just launched this on Friday and it's 
obviously going to keep getting better and better. Like I remember when Osmosis first launched and when IBC first launched and how much we've improved from that point up till now. And it's really not been a, it's not been a long period of time. So I think that we can only expect amazing things, you know, in the next five years, 10 years, like again, people forget how young of an industry this is. And it's really exciting yeah. when you look down the road and when you're thinking way farther ahead, like, wow, and imagine how this is going to look like 10 years from now, like the conversations we're going to be having, you know, like these are all the, you know, the, the first blocks that we're setting for something truly amazing. I think that this year, the Cosmos ecosystem is making a lot of noise. Like you said before, everything was about yeah. Ethereum, you know, and, and sure, Ethereum, it's a, it's an incredibly valuable ecosystem because it, you know, it, it, it changed the industry as a whole. Now there's a lot of attention going into the Cosmos ecosystem because of just the transaction speed and how pliable and flexible really the Cosmos SDK is. And it's, it's tremendous value. And I think that people are just going to keep adding more value and more value. So I think that a cash network cloud, most of these tools, them improving over the next five to 10 years, it's going to be a completely different landscape of like, what we're looking at right now, you said it's bleeding edge. So I'm really excited to see, you know, what's in the pipeline, like further down the road. Uh, and uh, can you share, like talking about like sure. applications, like, can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I can talk about, I guess, what we run on uh, Akash because we're users of our own product, which uh, helps. Absolutely. Um, helps to find ways to improve it and find bugs and stuff, but uh, we run, uh, we well, in the past, we've run uh, blockchain nodes to uh, just have a, a RPC node, which uh, basically any custom space uh, chain requires to have. Uh, we have uh, our app um, deployed at uh, cloudmos.io or even cloudmos.io is running on a cache. Uh, we have the APIs, web servers running on the cache. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but uh, I made a Twitter bot that uh, uses our alert system. It's called Unusual Cosmos. And uh, it tweets, well, it receives notifications from our, our alert, alerting system when big transactions happen on the chains that we index. And it tweets about it. And that's just like a small web server I did. I put, I Docker containerized it, deployed it on one of the providers on a cache and it just runs like, uh, I set up, I set up an alert on it to uh, check if the balance uh, ever uh, comes down and I need to add more AKT in the deployment. So I don't need to stress uh, if it's uh, working or not. And uh, all of our indexers, uh, I didn't really talk about it, but it's uh, one of the other projects that we worked on in the past two years, which was born out of our first project, the uh, analytics dashboard. So the way we do, uh, just a small par parenthesis, I guess, uh, the way we uh, calculate the stats on the Akash network is that we go through, we index the whole blockchain. So we go through... Uh, all of the blocks and since everything is on chain, like uh, when someone creates a deployment or someone closes a deployment or someone creates a lease at a certain amount, we can go back in time and go through each of the blocks and extract extract each of the transaction to process each type of transaction mm -hmm. to eventually calculate um, how much AKT is being spent on the network, how much uh, active deployments, so uh, it's a it's a web server that runs uh, on a cache, and we run it for uh, uh, all of the chains that we support uh, the alerts. So uh, there's, like I said, so many uh, like possibilities. Uh, you just need to imagine it, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we run on a cache currently. Uh, lots of stuff can be run on a cache uh, more than this, but uh, that's what we do. That's amazing. And I would like to ask you then, like, what what excites you about the future of cloud computing? Like being so involved in a in a you know in a project as a cache and and being the founder of Cloudmos. Like, what excites you the most about the future of cloud computing and cloud storage? 
Um, it's mostly that um, I wanted to be invested in the crypto future, but without like having to go into a specific niche. Mm -hmm. And for me, as a developer, you're always going to need like cloud resources. So it's kind of like the saying of say, selling shovel in a gold era. Mm -hmm. I My thesis was to focus on a project that brings value to the other projects. So in that sense, uh, I'm kind of like exposed to the industry itself yeah. or part of it, if you know what I mean. And uh, that's where I went. And I like we've seen uh, in the past month, like with the, the AI narrative, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all of it, like a cash out of a sudden started like uh, pumping like all the other AI projects. Uh, that was mostly, well, it's still uh, going, going on, but uh, it's mostly because uh, Akash has been uh, talking about AI for like uh, years. years. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, it's all about the GPUs because uh, you need GPU to train your, your models for machine learning. So, and machine learning powers AI. And it goes back to what I was saying about selling sho shovels in the gold era. I think uh, it's the best way to be exposed to uh, a broader uh broader technology like ai if you're selling gpus i think it you get the you reap the benefits that way so yeah that's how i see it <laughs> of course yeah that makes makes a lot of sense and like like we said when sometimes we, i explained a cash to a person and they were like no but i don't get it and it's like no you like understand the fundamentals, but also understand the future, like understand where this is going, like understand, like, you know, people that are more like, just like a, an investor, you know, they're looking to buy a token that's going to like go up in price significantly. And we always emphasize a lot about understand what you're investing in. If you're only going to engage with these projects as an investor and actually just going to like buy and hold a coin, understand why you're doing it. So I, I love uh, the example you're giving about selling shovels uh, in like during the gold rush, because absolutely, you know, it's, I, I believe that this is the moment where the cash is really going to shine and it, it's, it's going to, you know, a lot of people are going to start focusing on, okay, why, what is this a cash net worth thing? Like if they hadn't before uh, heard of a cash. So I think it's going to be really exciting a couple of next years for you and the, and the team of, of Cloudmos, and I would like to know, like, then how Cloudmos fits into the bigger picture. Because you say, like, you you want to develop this, like, um, this like bird's eye view, right, of the industry. Like, you want to like be focused on one specific niche. Like, you like having this exposure to having like a like a broader view of a broader vision of the entire industry. So, how does Cloudmos fit into the bigger picture of the Cosmos ecosystem and the future of web 3.0? Uh, it's a tough question to answer. I am um, but yeah, uh, it goes back to uh, the you said the bird eye view. I I kind of see it uh, the other way around, but like as a base layer Got it. Got of understood. the uh, uh, something that like all the uh, crypto project, even outside of Cosmos, can use. And like we just want to position position ourselves as like the the main platform where uh, developers go to use cloud resources uh, that are decentralized and provided by lots of providers. That's kind of how I see it, if that makes sense. It does. It does make sense. And just the main hub yeah. of like uh, cloud computing, uh, eventually they're, they're going to launch the GPU marketplace. So uh, just uh, the main access to uh, decentralized cloud computing and we've like we have a lot of other well we have other tools that kind of fit in that picture as well but they're like complementary like the alerts that we build it doesn't really resonate with like cloud computing necessarily but it helps uh, to set up like alerts for 
things that are related to cloud computing. So it all goes down to making like a cent, well, not a centralized platform, but like a just a platform that contains all the tools you need to easily capture the most uh, out of the decentralized cloud computing and maybe eventually uh, add some more uh, protocols in there for like uh, pers uh, not persistent storage, but uh, uh, just storage like uh, file storage or SIA or all the other uh, uh, file storage networks out there. Mm -hmm to make it kind of like, uh, you know, what AWS is doing in their own platform, but the decentralized way. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's great. And I like the, what you said about like more of like the base layer of everything as opposed to the, to the birds, bird eyes view. And uh, yeah, I think that I agree, like not becoming like decentralized hub, but just becoming a tool that is readily available for developers to use. And I think that one thing that's gonna keep being amazing is the fact that Cosmos, like you no know, day after day is connecting with more chains and like more projects are implementing IBC. We're seeing like all these attempts of bridges from different ecosystems to bridge, you know, all these different ecosystems together. And I think that's, uh, I liked also a thing that you talked about a couple of questions ago, which was the fact that you wanted to create something that accrued value to the entire ecosystem. You know, I think that's really something that's a fundamental quality, like a central aspect for the entire Cosmos community. So I, I like to hear you saying those things, you know, like you wanted to invest your energy into something that actually brought value to everyone. So I think that yeah, that Akash and Cloudmos is going to continue to be important in the space because you're basing everything off of how can I give the most value to the entire ecosystem? You know, like obviously you want to... Yeah, and beyond beyond that, like the Cosmos ecosystem is such a... It feels like it's big, but it's so small yeah. compared to like so many things. And there's so many other... Well, without like putting Cosmos aside, just as a growth uh, mentality, there's so many other like... Uh, groups of developers out there uh, either in crypto or in tech in general that can be targeted for these kind of that can also benefit from this so uh, yeah I'm, I'm very uh, excited to see where this is going in the future absolutely talking about the future can you share a little bit about the roadmap for cloudmos for the next couple of years uh, next couple of years that's a uh, it seems to me, like it's a very long time, like you said. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, things, uh, change so fast in the crypto uh, industry. For the um, next couple of quarters. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, our one of the missions that we had in the first quarter was to uh, migrate the the cloud multiplayer app in the browser, which we did, and now um, the next um, uh, I say missions, but they're like. Uh, projects i guess it's a uh, because we have a uh, like we have the explorer and we have the deploy tool and on the explorer we uh, enable like user accounts you can create a an account uh, linked with the uh, google in your email to send uh, the alerts mm -hmm. through the email but uh, we want to merge these two together to have like the the big platform with all the features uh, so connecting with your account, you, uh, you, we want to build that platform so that you can save your templates and like have a marketplace of templates, um, to make it easier for, uh, for new users that don't know about Docker and can, that can use like the pre-made solutions from the community in the marketplace. So, uh, this is kind of, uh, our mission in the next few months. It sounds uh, very simple, but uh, there's a lot of moving pieces that need to uh, be aligned to make it work and make it uh, seamless. So, uh, yeah, that's our mission in the next uh, few quarters: make the everything come together and uh, make the the best platform to drive as much ad adoption as possible. Well, that sounds amazing. It sounds like we're gonna be following absolutely everything that 
you guys are doing at Cloudmost. It sounds like you're going to have your hands full, but it's going to be exciting. Uh, so Max, thank you so much for sharing all those things about uh, Cloudmost. Now, I would just like to go over to the rapid fire questions. Uh, these ones you can just answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Sure. I'll try to do my best. Awesome. So, Max, which was the first coin you owned and why? Uh, it was a Bitcoin because that was the first thing that I knew about crypto. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, Max, what's your favorite beer? Uh, I'm not a big beer okay. guy, but... Uh, I, I like uh, sour, sour beers. Okay. What would be like your go-to drink if you were drinking something? Uh, I'd go with the white wine. White wine. Okay. I love wine too. So any favorite white wines? Not in particular. Not in particular. Good. <laughs> That's good. That's perfect. And Max, what's your favorite hobby? Uh, I like uh, gaming a bit. But uh, nowadays, I don't game that much. I I like to do sports. I run a lot. I run some uh, marathons oh, and wow. stuff. So yeah, get in shape. Awesome. That's great. Good for you. And Max, Thank you. what's your favorite book? Uh, my favorite book is, um, what's the name? Uh, just give me a sec. I think I have it over there. Go grab it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's um, by Dale Carnegie. Uh, yes. Uh, how to make how friends, friends and influence people. people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know why I had a black hair on that. It's, yeah, <laughs> it happens. Book. It happens. It happens. Great book. Like, I think I think I read it at least once a year. And I, I recommended that actually, I think two episodes ago, we were just talking about how to win friends and influence people. I think that's the best oh, yeah. book for nice. like relationship, you know, forming and strengthening habits and like just having good communication between parties. So that's great, great book. So you see, go read how to win friends and influence people. You won't, you won't regret it. And yeah, I agree. Max, if you could choose between flying and being invincible, which one would you choose and why? I guess be invincible yeah. because there's more utility to it. I mean, it depends on what the invincible being invincible means. Like, does he mean are you immortal or are you just like yeah, like you're indestructible, indestructible, bulletproof, like ah, indestructible. Yeah, it'd be fun to fly. That's for sure. Yeah. But if I can withstand uh, any accident uh, from death, uh, I I I take it. Absolutely. I like that. I like your logic. And Max, what do you think the prices of Bitcoin and Cosmos will be two years from today? Hmm. It's a very uh, good question. I, I look a bit, uh, I mean, it's not the short uh, answer you're looking, but uh, depends on what happens in the macro scale. Like there's so, so many things happening with like inflation and maybe a world war or something like that. So depends how it goes. But uh, uh, if uh, anything bad happens and we end up having a bull run, uh, maybe a Bitcoin uh, 100K and uh, Atom at, uh, I would hope so, new all-time high to $100, something oh, like yeah. that. Absolutely. Maybe. We'll see. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I like I like your thinking. Uh, well, Max, I wanted to thank you and I want to recognize you for all the efforts that you and your team make to make sure that we have a, such a valuable tool as Cloudmos. Um, I want to acknowledge you because of the fact that I can see your deep commitment to the blockchain space, to the Cosmos ecosystem, and I'm sure that you're going to keep on creating amazing applications and amazing other programs. If it's something different from Cloudmos, then I'm sure it's going to be exceptional as well. And yeah, I would also like you, you to share with the people how they can get in touch with you. How can our community stay in touch, become engaged with Cloudmos with a cash, follow what you're doing? How would they go about doing that? 
Uh, the best place is on our uh, Twitter account at uh, cloudnose.io. And then from there, uh, we also have a Discord channel for like uh, support and stuff. But uh, you can DM me on uh, Twitter like you did. Yeah. It's the best place. Awesome. Well, Max, once again, thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for this amazing conversation. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, be glad to have a conversations with you in the future absolutely well. absolutely that is that is a must anyways enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk soon thank you you too